All right, let's find the largest area possible. All right, on this one, uh, we have 120 feet of fencing to construct a pen. 100 feet, 120 feet of fencing, fencing, and this pen is to have four equal size stalls. The pen is rectangular in shape, like the one that's already drawn for us. What are the dimensions of the pen? So we're trying to optimize the largest pen possible, um, its area. So as we get going on this, I would definitely suggest draw a picture if you haven't drawn one already. Next, I always like labeling my sides on, on a picture like this. Um, we're going to create a constraint equation, basically our limitations on this, and then a, an objective function, trying to construct an equation, a function where we're trying to either maximize or minimize something. So the constraint equation has to do with we only have 120 feet of fencing. That's our limitation. So 120 is going to be involved with this. And our objective function, well, we want to find the largest area. And it is a rectangle, so we can think like length times width if we want to. Let's start labeling these. As we get going on this, I'm going to label each one of these vertical sides of our fence with an X. And then all the way across, I'm going to make that a Y. So all the way across the top, this is also going to be a Y. All right, it doesn't fit in super nicely, but you get what I'm saying. So our constraint is if I add up all these side lengths, I'm probably going to use all my fencing, the whole 120. So let me think. We have one, two, three, four, five copies of X. So that's five X's, right? Those are each length of fence. And then we have two Y's. So the constraint is going to be 120 equals 5x plus 2y's. Now the objective function shouldn't be too bad because of how I created my y up here. Area of a uh, rectangle is going to be length times width or base times height. So in our case it's just going to be x times y. Now the problem here is our objective function that we want to take the derivative of in a second has two variables hanging out on the right hand side. So I want to rewrite that so it only has a single variable. To do so let's solve down our constraint equation because it has both an x and a y in it and isolate one of these two variables by itself. Now I'm going to elect to get the y on one side by itself. So to do that I would subtract 5x, move it to the other side first, and then divide by 2. All right, I'm electing to divide each individual term by 2, but you could have divided the entire side by 2 and that would have been okay as well. All right, 120 divided by 2 makes 60, minus 5x over 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that, take it over here to my objective function, and I'm going to replace the y with 60 minus 5x over 2. So it's replacing the y in the objective function. All right, now I've created an area function the objective function here that only has a single variable. Right? With this we only have x's over on the right hand side. So if we wanted to we could name this a of x and let's think about if we're trying to find a maximum area we want to take the derivative. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the x from the outside to each one of those terms on the inside. Now why I'm thinking about doing that is when I'm trying to take the derivative instead of using the product rule, which we could have, I'd rather just use the power rule. So the derivative here, a prime of x is going to be 60 minus 5x. So that's not too bad, right? When we bring the 2 down, multiply it by that 5 halves, the 2 in the numerator, 2 in the denominator get to cancel each other out, or make a 1, I should say. All right, from here, I want to find critical values. So to find those, I'm going to set this equal to 0 and work on solving it down. So I'm going to subtract the 60, move it to the other side, and divide both sides by negative 5. So this will make x on the left-hand side is equal to, it looks like, 12 on the right-hand side. Okay, you may be saying to yourself, okay, that feels good. x is 12. How do I know that's actually going to be a maximum area? So what I'm going to suggest is let's use the first derivative, take its derivative, and run through the second derivative test real quick. 
right? The second derivative is just going to be negative 5 because the derivative of 60, a constant, is going to be 0. So this is negative everywhere, regardless of an x value of 12 or not. So if it's negative everywhere, what that tells us is this is concave down, right? Second derivative tells us about concavity. Those graphs have this sort of look to them. So that means it's going to have a maximum at this critical value. All right, so x is one of our dimensions. Remember, we are looking for the dimensions of the largest pen. And what's the area? All right, so one of our dimensions, it's going to be 12 going up and down. We need to find a y value that goes along with this. So I'm going to take that 12 we got for x, and I'm going to go back here to our equation that has y on the other side all by itself. So I'm going to replace that in and say 60 minus 5 times 12 divided by 2 is going to be our y value. And this works out to be 60 minus 30 equals our y value. So our y value going across there is 30. So the dimensions here, this is going to be 30 all the way across the bottom. So I guess you could answer this. The dimensions are 12 feet by 30 feet is typically how we sort of write those dimensions. And then we also want to define what's the total area, right? Well, I'm going to choose to use the area function that we created here. And the area is going to be, well, we said 12 for our x value multiplied by 30 for our y value. That maximum area is going to be 360 square feet. I believe that answers all of our questions that we were asked on this one. Hope this helps out as you're setting up these fencing problems. Real, really are a lot of fun.